First World War, Second World War, 1914 to 1919, 1939 to 1945. And thereafter we have seen another development. During this war we saw the emergence of an ideologically very powerful bloc which dominated the world scenario for 70 years, as Soviet bloc emergence of Soviet Russia. In the following 50 years, the world saw a strange confluence, a strange unity. Those very countries who fought against each other, the countries around Mediterranean, European countries, and ultimately ended in two world wars, those very countries united. First common market came, European common market. And today, they are not only talking, but they are practically putting into operation the concept of European Union, consisting of 28 states, having European Parliament, common currency, common foreign policy, the very countries who fought against each other for almost 300 years. They are not talking of war today, they are talking of common currency, common economy, common business, common industry, development together. Therefore, you are the future of the nations, not only in India and Bangladesh, but all over the world. You are to decide what course of action you will take, conflict or conciliation, distractions, our development. I am glad you have in your itinerary an opportunity not only to go through the memories of the history which is common, which is your history. Delhi was your capital for several hundred years, for several centuries. Many of the magnificent buildings, art, craft, which you will find were the products of the Mughal emperors starting from Taj Mahal to Red Fort to Fatehpur Sikri and so on and so forth. Delhi was capital of undivided India. The halls, Central Assembly, even in this Darbar Hall, the leaders of the subcontinent met. The office which I occupy as the study of the President was first occupied by Lord Arwin in 1931. And last, Governor-General of British India was Lord Mountbatten, who finalized the partition plan. The mute walls, they witnessed that historic transformation. I welcome you, not only to Rashtrapati Bhavan, but to India. And through you, I convey my best regards to the brothers and sisters of Bangladesh. Only one simple word that we are with you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor and privilege for me to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports to the Honorable President of India for sparing his precious time to meet the Bangladeshi youth delegation. Sir, your guidance will forever remain a source of inspiration for them. I further like to thank the Honorable Minister of State, Independent Charge for Youth Affairs and Sports for his continuous efforts to energize the International Youth Exchange Program with more and more initiatives and round-the-clock concern. On this occasion, our sincere thanks to our Ministry of External Affairs, the Indian High Commission in Bangladesh, and the Bangladesh Government for organizing this visit of the 100-member Bangladesh Youth Delegation. I also extend my sincere thanks to all the agencies and staff of Rashtrapati Bhavan for making this occasion a memorable event.